All right. Good morning. Uh, here we're going to go over the review 5.10. Review 5.10, questions 14 to 20. Let's start with 14. 14, the 20 kilogram toboggan is pulled along by a force of 30 newtons. What is the force of gravity on the toboggan? So here we've got our toboggan. Uh, so we have, this is 20 kgs, we got 30 newtons pulling it a little long. What is the force of gravity on the toboggan? So A, uh, F is equal to mg. So that will equal our 20 kilograms times our 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Oh, what did I do with my Casio FX 260 solar? There it is. So that's equal to 196 newtons. All right, then B says, what is the coefficient of friction? Hmm. Now, we know the force of gravity, therefore we know the normal force being 196 newtons. And in this case, the force of friction will be equal to the force of the pull, equaling 30 newtons. So we have force of friction is equal to mu F n, or mu is equal to our force of friction divided by our F n. Oh, let's do this just for being proper. There we go. So that will be 30 newtons divided by our 196 newtons. Gives us a coefficient of friction of 0 0.15. And remember, there are no units. All right, let's go down to C. How much force is needed to pull the toboggan if two 60 kilogram girls are sitting on it? All right, so now We've got a couple of kids. who decided to come along and sit on it. Younger sisters always do things like this, don't they? I don't want to go for a ride. I don't want to go for a ride. <laughs> All right. So now we have the situ situation. Uh, so we have 60 kilograms here, 60 kilograms here. So what we need to do is we need to calculate. So we have the situation. We need to calculate the force of gravity so we can get the normal force. So we can calculate the force of friction so we know what the force of the pull would have to be. Okay, so we have our masses, and our masses are going to be equal to 60 kilograms plus 60 kilograms because there's two girls plus 20 kilograms because we still have to include the uh, mass of the toboggan. So that's 120 plus 20, 140 kilograms. So the force of gravity, which is equal to mg. So that would be 140 times our 9.8. So that's equal to 1372 newtons. So then our force of friction, which is equal to mu Fn, well, this is our F. It's a really big N. <laughs> there's, there's our normal force. And uh, so the question is, yeah, how much force is required to pull? Well, the pull would have to equal the force of friction. So our coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.15, which we just calculated in B, times 1372 newtons. So that's 
so that's equal to 206 newtons. And they said 210. Yeah, same deal. All right, that's 14. Let's go on to 15. It takes a five newton force to pull a two kilogram object along the ground. What is the coefficient of friction? So we have our object and we have five newtons pulling it. And we know that it is two kilograms. So we need the normal force, which will be equal to the force of gravity, which will equal mg. 2.0 times our 9.8, 19.6 newtons. Um, our force of pull, which is equal to 5 newtons, is equal to our force of friction. So, uh, force of friction is equal to mu n so mu will be equal to our force of friction divided by it was a big arrow there <laughs> divided by a good recovery divided by our normal force so that will equal 5.0 newtons divided by our 19.6 newtons Zero point zero point two six newtons. All right, sixteen. How much force does it take to pull a one hundred kilogram packing crate along the floor given the following coefficients of friction? All right, so we've got our packing crate throw in a little bit of humor and <laughs> I'm too hilarious um, so we know that this is 100 kilograms so we're going to have a force of gravity coming down which gives us a normal force going up so we need to calculate that we're going to have a certain force of friction uh, uh, how much force does it take to pull and so our force of our pull has to has to at least equal our force of our friction all right so let's find our fn which is equal to our fg which is equal to mg which is equal to 100 times 9.8 980 newtons so i'm just going to do the first two and uh, so we need to calculate our force so the, let's just say it here the force of our friction Let's erase that. Our force of our pull is equal to our force of our friction. So we need to find the force of our friction. And so we know in the first case, the force of friction will be equal to 0 0.10 times our 980 newtons. So that would equal 98 newtons. This would be for A. For B, our force of our friction is equal to 0 0.20 times our 980 newtons. And so there, then that will be equal to 196 newtons. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in the book, they're saying 2 times 10 to the squared newtons. 2 times 10 to the squared is 200 newtons, so they're just doing some rounding. Okay? So those are A and B. C and D are going to work out to be the same. 17. If the coefficient of friction, mu, so is e to the 0 0.25, how much force is needed to pull each of the following uh, masses around a lot of rough desk? So again, I'll just do a couple. So we have A, which, well, let's just draw a picture. Draw a picture, draw a picture, draw a picture. So we're going to have our force of gravity. We're going to have our normal force. We're going to have our force of friction, and we're going to have our force of our pull. All right, so the normal force is what we need, but that's going to be equal to our force of gravity, which is uh, mg. Our, we need the force of our pull, which will be equal to the force of friction, which will equal mu Fn, just to set these things up. So in A, we have 25 kilograms. So our force of gravity, which is mg, 25 kilograms times our 9.8. So that's equal to 245 newtons. Then to find the force of friction, mu Fn, 0 0.25, the coefficient of friction, times our 245. Sixty-one newtons. For B, we have 15 kilograms. So again, we need our force of gravity. So I'll have our 15 kilograms times our 9.8. That's equal to 147 newtons. Our force of friction, which is equal to mu Fn, and this is our Fg, but that's our Fn as well. Uh, so we'll have 0 0.25 times our 147 newtons. That'd be 37 newtons. That's less than that. Yeah, but the, the mass is less. We're dealing with 15 kilograms uh, compared with the 25 kilograms. So I'm going to leave C and D for you to do the same pattern. Let's deal with 18. A 10 newton force stretches a length of fishing line by 10 centimeters. What is the line's uh, spring constant? So we've got this and it goes 10 centimeters, and we have a 10 newton force pulling it. So we know F is equal to Kx. So we have our X, which is our 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.10 meters. We have our F, which is our 10 newtons. And K is what we're looking for. All right, so we substitute in our values. We'll have our 10 newtons is equal to K times 0 0.10 meters. So K will equal 10 divided by 0 0.1, so that would be 100 or, yeah, newtons per meter. And there we go. A 20-newton force is used to stretch various rubber bands. 
Calculate the amount of stretch that will occur given each of the following uh, spring constants. Okay, so again, I'll do, do the first two. But we know that our force is equal to 20 newtons. That remains the constant. And uh, they say calculate the amount of stretch. So that's going to be our x, how much they change. And so our k for a is equal to 200 newtons per meter. So we have F is equal to KX. So we'll have our 20 newtons is equal to K and, oh, we know K, uh, 200 newtons per meter times X. So we're going to have 20 divided by 200. And so X will equal 0 0.2. One zero meters. B. Well, our K here is equal to 100 newtons per meter. Um, that's half of what the previous one was. I would expect this distance to be then twice. So I'll have 20 newtons is equal to 100 newtons per meter times X. And wouldn't you know it, x is equal to 0 0.20 meters. So again, I'll leave C and D for yours. And this brings us to question number 20. Question number 20, an archer pulls back with force of 240 newtons, moving the arrow 60 centimeters. What is the spring constant of the bow? Uh, pulls back, so we know our force is equal to 240 newtons. Uh, our x is equal to 60 centimeters, so that's equal to 0 0.60 meters. Now, having said this, uh, I'm changing this to meters from our centimeters. It doesn't always matter. Uh, you could have a... We're asking for k. And often K is in newtons per meter, in which case we'd want to be using this. But you could also express it in newtons per centimeter, in which case we'd just be using that value of the X. It's not necessarily that important which one you're using. But anyways, let's work this out. So F is equal to KX. F is equal to 240 newtons. K is what we're looking for, and our X, which is 0 0.60 meters. So k will equal our 240 divided by 0 0.6. And so k is equal to 400 newtons per meter. There we go. So I'll get this uploaded. And uh, you can go over these, and I'll see about getting out a worksheet for Monday. And so, Monday worksheets, workday, and then Tuesday, look at having a quiz. Uh, if I'm getting the worksheet out, I'll be trying to do uh, video solutions. was just getting from some people that it was useful to have these. And so, hey, why not? All right, 19 minutes coming up on 19 and a half minute video. Nice quick one to get you go through. Anyways, have a great day.